Ladies and gentlemen, movie lovers and cinephiles around the world, welcome once again to another edition of Andy Takes On. And in today's episode, Andy takes on Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh, also known as When Brad Met Angelina. Now, I don't think that there's any people or very many people around the world who don't know that Mr. and Mrs. Smith was also ground zero for what would become the family Jolie Pitt. But, of course, I'm here about the movie. So here's the story. We meet soon-to-be literally embattled couple John and Jane Smith as they attend marriage counseling. Their relationship has deteriorated to the point where they simply don't see eye to eye on the basics. You know, stuff like, oh, I don't know. How long have we been together? Five years ago. Six. Right, five or six years ago. Now, their situation is best surmised when Jane tells the counselor that they There's this huge space between us, and it just keeps filling up with everything that we don't say to each other. What is that called? Marriage. A quick flashback to five or six years, depending on which of the two you ask, revealed that Mr. and Mrs. Smith, when they first met, sparks blue. And I mean like a 4th of July celebration or, you know, New Year's. So the chemistry was positively palpable, so much so that it was only six weeks before they became engaged. Cut back to today, and those initial fires have cooled, and the Smiths now live in suburbia in what has become a very mundane marriage of inconvenience. All of this might be powerful, for the course, except that beneath their professional exteriors, the Smiths are actually housing one very big secret. They're highly trained assassins. Which I suppose wouldn't in and of itself be a problem, except that they're working for rival firms. And the cherry on top, they never came clean to one another. So when their employers discover that their employees have crossed the proverbial floor, they uh, set them up on a fake mission so that they can wipe each other out. When those pesky feelings get in the way and their plan fails, they decide to come after them directly. Hijinks ensue, and with the veneer of the fake life now removed, Mr. and Mrs. Smith begin to get to really know and really fall in love with each other. For real, this time. We would have to redo every conversation we've ever had. Only one problem remains. How do we get rid of the veritable army of assassins and spies that's locked onto them like a nerve-seeking missile? Looking at the tones and themes, with its whimsical soundtrack, look up the song Mondo Bongo, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is a gentle introduction into a most implausible scenario. It's shot in a crisp and slick visual style that carries an air of romance about it. As much as it would have been easy to center this film on the idea of two people with uh, blue eyes and chiseled cheekbones falling in and out of love, it presents a marriage that swings from both extremes of the pendulum, a humdrum bore on the one end to a passionate affair on the other. And the key to its survival was taking the risk to openly and honestly communicate with each other. And almost kill each other, of course, but mostly the communication thing. Looking at the characters, as the movie's name suggests, our focus really is on Mr. and Mrs. Smith, with most other characters really being sounding boards for exposition, uh, backstory, or to verbalize the Smith's internal dialogues. So let's look at Jane Smith first. To keep herself from despairing at the loveless marriage that she finds herself now in, she's now cold and calculating, prim and proper, frigid and severe. But every once in a while, we glimpse the fiery woman that John met in Colombia. Unfortunately, these glimpses of that woman come mostly at times when she's trying to kill someone so you know there's a red flag and then we have john smith bumbling but lovable it's unclear if the rather uncoordinated john smith is simply a front uh, that mr smith uses in the same way that clark kent is a disguise for superman he's played by brad pitt with that slightly exaggerated mannerisms um, that allow him to really pull off the comedic element but as with jane occasionally you get to see a man who's trying to reach out to his wife across what seems to be a widening divide. We have Eddie played by Vince Vaughn, and I have to say, I feel like the producers just put Vince Vaughn on set and let him loose. They just unleashed him because he's John's best friend and pure comic relief, coming in with such dialogue as... Mom! We're on high alert here! I almost killed you right then! You do not even realize! Never mind. He literally threatened his mom's life. <laughs> uh, not funny. Anyway, my take is this. Make no mistake, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is a romantic comedy cleverly disguised as an action movie. Its simple, though unlikely premise, is delivered with sharp and slick visuals and a musical score that 
I realized in subsequent screenings was as much a part of the movie as the actors were. It really is a character in the film and it tells you how to feel and when. The scenes to look out for for me are when Jane gets escorted out of the building and uh, Mr. Smith gets lucky. Are you lucky? Yeah. No I'm kidding. I'm up all night to get lucky. We're up all night to get lucky. The redecorating of the house. It's like you're redecorating it. I'm shame about this. And then the in-store showdown, which uh, closes out the film. The writing is witty, full of double entendres, and the addition of Vince Vaughn, comedic cherry on top. Now, if you're a hopeful romantic like me, then this movie, uh, with its exquisitely choreographed action comedy scenes, will have you deep in your feels and glad for the person you're with because, you know, they're not trying to kill you. So I give it four out of five stars. Now, those are my takeouts from Andy Takes On Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and this is me taking off. See you next time.